So, hands up all the single people here. Raise your hands. Yeah, keep them up so we can all make a mental note. And you can raise your hand half fast if you've got a partner, but they're working nights this week. <laughs> somebody but I got dumped. Aww. I wasn't that bothered actually. It was a bit like the disappointment you feel when you come to the end of one of those moving walkways at the airport. <laughs> and you know you sort of go, hmm. <laughs> and there is a little sense of disappointment, but it's not much. <laughs> I'd meet somebody if I went on holiday, but I have a phobia of going away alone and being befriended by a British family who feels sorry for me. <laughs> so I get to be the person who flat sits my friends when they go away, and there's one friend who's paranoid about getting her keys cut, so she always hides them in an elaborate place and then sends me a text message about where that is. Go to the cupboard around the side of the house where the electricity meters are. Reach up onto the high shelf for a cracked flower pot. In the flower pot you'll find a gardening glove. Inside the gardening glove will be the first in a series of riddles. You'll need a compass, a spade, a map of the local area, and a Latin dictionary. Good luck! gym a lot because I heard that's the new place to find romance you know. and last week I got chatting to somebody nice in the jacuzzi it was going quite well but perhaps I shouldn't have said it's an acid bath and pretended to dissolve <laughs> I did have to start training properly a few months ago in the gym though so I got a wild card into Wimbledon into the tennis been trying for years and I think what made the difference this year was I sent in a photo of myself sitting in my friend's wheelchair. <laughs> I did have to crop the photo because you could see my friend lying on the pavement. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't my friend, it was just someone I found at King's Cross waiting for a family. No, no, I wouldn't really lie about being disabled. In fact, I went to an event at my local library and a woman handed me a feedback form and said, would you mind ticking the box that says you have a disability? Because that helps us get funding. And she must have sensed that I was worried about lying because she looked me up and down and she said, don't worry, depression counts. <laughs> as a disability. I wonder if you can get a special car sticker for it, a bit like the wheelchair ones, but just with a sad face. <laughs> and a speech bubble saying, couldn't possibly walk further with my shopping, might kill somebody. <laughs> so I got a new phone the other day, but don't mug me, I've got a shit phone because I live in Peckham, can't take any chances. Does anyone know Peckham in South London? Yeah. Sort of saying that in a slightly scarred way. Uh, you sound quite enthusiastic in the front, I don't know why. Uh, but it's not so bad actually, all those yellow murder signs do brighten the place up. <laughs> like sunflowers. And we are going up in the world now because we've got a coffee bar on the station called Sips. I saw it and I thought it won't be long before someone changes the letters around, it spells piss. <laughs> In fact, it won't be long at all, I did it. But I got my phone from the car phone war house. That was a, go a typo I made in Google. But if anyone's been to car phone warehouse in Peckham, it's actually a more appropriate description because it's full of people who spend more money on phones than education. <laughs> mobile phones. I think that lady's not laughed before, I know that. Um, but I think mobile phones encourage laziness because they have that text template folder, don't they, where they've written all your messages for you in case you can't be asked. And it's everyday phrases like, I'm in a meeting, I'm running late, fuck off, I hate you, stop stalking me, it's not funny anymore. I know I'm small, but I carry a knife. You know, things like that that you use every day. And you can send an emoticon as well, can't you? I don't know what some of them mean. There's one with little sunglasses. Is that, why are you texting? Me. I'm blind. <laughs> and one with a little face going, is that, can't talk now, I'm having an epileptic fit. <laughs> but the text template I hate the most is the one that says, I love you too. How lazy 
crazy and casual do you have to be in a relationship not to be bothered to type it? There's not even a kiss at the end of it. Why don't they just go the whole hog and have a text template for every stage of the relationship? Like, why don't we talk about moving in together? Send. Why don't you come off the pill? Send. Why are you on the pill with lesbians? Fuck off, I hate you. Stop stalking me, it's not funny anymore. But I did have some good news the other day, yeah. I won an award, yeah. Best lesbian comedian living in the borough of Southwark. <laughs> 35 and overs category. <laughs> More competitive than you might imagine. <laughs> Very crowded niche. Uh, that sounds quite rude, doesn't it? Um, open about my sexuality and when I came out to my parents as a teenager I was the one who was all ashamed and inhibited didn't want everyone knowing they started going around telling all the neighbours handing out flyers printing out t-shirts trying to get us all on Kilroy my mum tried to make me feel better by telling me something about her and her friend Joan on holiday <laughs> I didn't want to hear it, it was disgusting. <laughs> but Hal was talking earlier about who's uh, looking forward to Christmas, and I'm not really, because I always go and stay with my father, and the closest we get to some sort of activity or game is him showing me the drawer where his will is yet. <laughs> in case he dies suddenly. And then he'll forget that he's shown me, and he'll show me again, it's great. And we don't really bother exchanging gifts, we just look at old presents that we exchanged in the 1980s. So I can reminisce about the year one of my presents was that funny mastermind game with the little pegs in the board. <laughs> and the rather menacing photo on the front of the box, with an older gentleman and a Filipino woman in the background. <laughs> As if he was saying, look what I won. <laughs> But I did start feeling quite festive the other day, actually, when this newsletter came through my door from the Peckham Rye Safer Neighbourhoods team, their Christmas issue. I don't know why it came through my door, really, because I live in Dulwich. Um, <laughs> nice. Much nicer area. And there's a poem being sent in by Maud Plowman, age 98. She's really called Anne. I just changed her name there to protect her identity. It's not anyone's Nan, is it? That's a relief. She died yesterday. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, it's, it's quite a serious poem actually, it's about drinking and driving at Christmas, are you ready? Don't know why I said you're ready there, last time someone said that to me they're about to go down on me, but don't think about that. <laughs> no one's thinking about that. Don't drink and drive, it's so much nicer to be alive. If you want to enjoy the festive season, forget your car for a very good reason. Remember your loved ones waiting at home. They don't wish to spend Xmas alone. They'd much rather have you home with them to enjoy the Xmas fun than to have the sad news that you've been found dead in a wrecked car. <laughs> <laughs> She lost her sense of rhyme and rhythm there. <laughs> but we mustn't laugh, we mustn't laugh, because there is a serious message there, and that is don't write poetry just after a stroke. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening tonight. Enjoy the rest of the night.